from the book of Sirach. A kind mouth multiplies friends and appeases enemies, and gracious lips prompt friendly greetings. Let your acquaintances be many, but one in a thousand your confidant. When you gain a friend, first test him, and be not too ready to trust him. For one sword is a friend when it suits him, but he will not be with you in time of distress. Another is a friend who becomes an enemy and tells of the quarrel to your shame. Another is a friend, a boon companion, who will not be with you when sorrow comes. When things go well, he is your other self and lords it over your servants. But if you are brought low, he turns against you and avoids meeting you. Keep away from your enemies. Be on guard with your friends. A faithful friend is a sturdy shelter. He who finds one finds a treasure. A faithful friend is beyond price. No sum can balance his worth. A faithful friend is a life-saving remedy, such as he who fears God finds. For he who fears God behaves accordingly, and his friend will be like himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Guide me, Lord, in the way of your commands. Guide me, Lord, in the way of your commands. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. Guide me, O Lord, in the way of your commands. In your statutes I will delight. I will not forget your words. Guide me, Lord, in the way of your commands. Open my eyes that I may consider the wonders of your law. Guide me, Lord, in the way of your commands. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous deeds. Guide me, Lord, in the way of your commands. Give me discernment that I may observe your law and keep it with all my heart. Guide me, Lord, in the way of your commands. Lead me in the path of your commands, for in it I delight. Guide me, Lord, in the way of your commands. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus came into the district of Judea and across the Jordan. Again, crowds gathered round him, and as was his custom, he again taught them. The Pharisees approached him and asked, is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So, they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her, and if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. One brief observation on the gospel before I look at the first reading, and that is that the word of Jesus in the house to the disciples is surely a not-so-veiled reference to Herod and Herodias. Now, John explicitly condemned him. We saw what happened to John. Jesus is a bit more circumspect and nevertheless still pointed in his accusations against Herod and Herodias. So we know where Jesus stands with regard to them. The words of the book of Sirach today, I think, are useful for us. We want to be careful when it says, um, be on guard with your friends. I think maybe the better way of understanding that is your so-called friends, okay? Because our excerpt today goes through all the so-called friends, the ones that are, you know, willing to use you when things are going well and nicely keep their distance when things don't go so well. But when you find an authentic friend, as the scripture says, you found a treasure that is just absolutely without value. It is one of the most wonderful things 
the, the relationship of friendship in Christ especially is one of the most beautiful things that we can have. One of the phrases that is oftentimes used to describe spiritual direction is spiritual companion, spiritual friendship, walking together with Christ. You know, a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I think that as wonderful as some of our friendships are, and I know there's not a one of us here that can't look back throughout our lives and see those times when we have had authentic, magnificent, wonderful friends. Even if the relationship was temporary because of moving around, because of you know, distance, because of those things, still, for the time in which you were together with somebody else, it was one of the most beautiful and, and, and precious experiences you could possibly have. That's what Jesus wants to offer us, as he tells us in John's Gospel. I have called you friends because I've made known to you everything. I haven't held back anything at all. I've given you all of myself, all the words that my Heavenly Father has spoken. I don't call you servants. I don't call you low life or anything like that. I have called you friends. That is a magnificent, magnificent statement. St. Augustine made much of that particular passage. He wrote an entire treatise on friendship, in fact basing himself, not accidentally, on an earlier treatise on friendship by Cicero. Nice touch, a nice touch. But in the Confessions, he says it like this. Blessed is the man who loves you, O Lord, and who loves his friends for you and his enemies through you. Because there is the one who will never lose anyone who is dear to him, to whom all people are dear, in the one who can never be lost. Let us stand and pray.